Today I've travelled up to the village of Warstead in Norfolk, which is particularly famous in the past for its woven cloth, which was introduced to the area in the 12th century by Flemish weavers, who were invited to settle here by King Edward III, following his recent marriage to a Flemish princess. And so the entry was established by these people that travelled over from Flanders, and very soon they had acquired enough money to demolish the existing church and build this magnificent edifice which is known as St Mary's in the 14th century. And of particular interest inside are some unusual panel paintings and the remains, or should I say the faded remains, of medieval wall paintings which can be viewed in odd places within the church itself. Sadly though, by 1882, weaving had died out with the death of the last weaver here, a man by the name of John Cubitt. However, the industry still flourishes in a more private or hobby capacity by some of the local people that live here. But as a major industry, sadly, it's long gone. But have I travelled here to talk about the history, or the grandeur of this magnificent building, or perhaps something a little bit strange? which is an event which took place here in August 1975, when a lady by the name of Diane Berthelo came here with her husband and son on a hot August afternoon, and feeling the heat, she decided to take a seat on the bench to recover. And it was while she was there that her husband took a photograph, which was later developed, to reveal a ghostly apparition who appears to be sat behind her, a lady in white, and some say wearing a pig bonnet hat. As you can see from this photograph, there was quite distinctly a light form or energy. If you look towards the lower part of the picture, it quite obviously to me looks like a pair of legs and feet. Quite how that fits into it, I don't know. Some people have argued that this is merely a light refraction from a strong sunlight coming through the window and that there had been somebody else who was sat behind but no, the Burflows were quite adamant. There was nobody else in that church apart from Diane, her husband and her son. As a result of which, this has added a certain notoriety to the village and the new inn, which stands behind the church here, has been renamed the White Lady. But what I particularly like about this legend is the fact that it's a healing ghost. Although, of course, in the 1830s, a man who was staying at the King's Head pub, which sadly no longer exists, decided that on Christmas Eve, so the legend dictated, the White Lady Ghost would appear in the church. And so he thought that he would climb the belfry to meet the White Lady Ghost for himself. He was later found absolutely terrified, in fact mortified, because he died shortly thereafter, and he claimed in excitement, I've seen her, I've seen her. Quite what he saw, no to this day can actually say. And was he drunk when he went inside the church? I honestly don't know. But that is the legend of the White Lady Ghost. So on one side we have its early origins of having been experienced by somebody in the belfry here at the church who later died. And on another instance in August 1975, Diana Burflow suffering from a number of maladies, particularly a recent illness, actually recovered as a result of being sat on that particular bench inside the church. Was it the energy from the White Lady Ghost which revived her, or was it just pure coincidence? I'm always inclined to believe in the spiritual, and I'd like to believe that the White Lady Ghost is a healing energy. I'm actually suffering at this moment in time, although it's not too bad at the moment, from a kidney stone problem. Nothing which is particularly serious, but it's causing me a particular aggravation. And so today I intend to sit inside the church to see whether or not it would give me some kind of healing energy, whether it would take away the problem I'm afflicted with. That remains to be seen, but I'm certainly keen to find out. So, shall we pop inside the church now? I'm actually sat in these pews which are closely to the chancel and altar. 
in the August 75 photograph, Diana, she was actually sat at the other end of the church. But unfortunately, those benches or pews are no longer there. I believe they've been moved here. However, I'm hoping to open to spirit here, particularly hoping to draw through some of that healing energy from the White Lady. And I can say that the ambience that I feel here is really, really wonderful. I feel, feel very positive with that energy. There's nothing negative here. It's such a delightful church. I'm going to open to spirit now and see what we, we can pick up, if anything. I come here in love, light and peace. I mean no harm or disrespect. I just wish to make friendly and peaceful contact. This is such a beautiful building. And I thank the spirits of this building to allow me to be here today, to be able to touch into that energy. Please, could you give me a sign of your presence? I come here in love, light, and peace. Being sat quietly in here, you can just hear the ticking of the church clock in the tower. You can also smell that sweet, musty smell of ancient wood that always accompanies you when you visit these ancient buildings. I just saw a shadow going across towards the organ, across the wall to the organ. Can I say it was a human shadow? No, but it was certainly a shadow and it moved very quickly. Could it have been a high-sided vehicle? Extremely unlikely in this village. I didn't hear one go past. I heard a car go past but no cars can cast shadows from those windows because they're quite high up. So there's certainly a presence here as I'm talking to you now on camera. There is somebody here now. I've come here in love, light and peace I hope you're not offended by my presence here. I mean you no harm or disrespect. I know that you're here, you've shown yourself to me. There's a shadow form. Wow. Something big moved then. Did you hear that? Let's have a wander down to the tower end of the church where the apparition was experienced all those years ago.
Okay, I'm coming down to the tower and the baptismal font. What an elegant piece of craftsmanship. It's almost like something you see in a village square somewhere in France. I think originally the pews were placed here, but they've been since cleared out. The only things that remain are the Georgian box pews, which you can see either side of the aisle. So it creates this open area. Such a wonderful ambience, just walking around inside this magnificent structure. Such a lofty building, almost reaches up towards heaven and the saints. And there are wall paintings and saints all around us. If we look over here on the entrance to the bell tower, we can see a number of panels which are painted, which I believe date from the 16th century, which was roughly just before the dissolution of the Catholic Church in England. And yet, amazingly, they've survived, as well as some original screen paintings on the rood screen by the altar, which are also still in place. They were retouched in the 1960s, having badly flaked away over the centuries, but they're still there. And as I've explained to you on other examples of places that I've traveled to during the English Civil War, the zealots within the Protestant zealots within Cromwell's army, and particularly so in Cambridgeshire and in Suffolk, went on the rampage, destroying much of this original artwork, claiming it to be popish or far too Catholic for their very, very sensitive tastes. Fortunately here, there's been no mass destruction of the original effigies and paintings. There's been no mass destruction of the original effigies and paintings. And it all still survives to this day. And I'm just amazed by it all. And you can imagine coming in here on this hot August afternoon, we've all experienced it, and being under the weather because of the heat, and in her case, because of recent illness. And she must have felt at that time that she wasn't going to last very much longer. And yet this curative spiritual presence appeared, not only in the photograph, but also touched her in a way that gave her health and happiness for the remainder of her life. And she, of course, she's still alive now. I believe she's well into her 70s. So it certainly fulfilled her life for her. And I understand they come back here fairly regularly to pay their respects to the church. Another feature while I'm standing here that I particularly enjoy is this fantastic 16th century medieval hammer-beamed roof. It must have cost an absolute fortune, carved from oak, must weigh an absolute ton, and to replace that today, the cost would be extremely prohibitive. It's just a wonderful space to be in, and in such a very quiet village. On the floor by the font are a number of graves and there's some grave plates at different intervals on the floor. Wondering if any of these could give an indication as to who the identity of the white lady could be. Um, we can find that uh, Hannah, the wife of Robert Coles, is buried here. Anne Miller. Uh, Mariah Osler, Elizabeth Mace, 
and coals. Elizabeth Tuck and Catherine Smith. Some of the others are so badly worn it's difficult to, to actually identify who's buried there. Such a wonderful ambience. Heavy with this ambience, a very pleasant ambience. And um, just looking again at these Georgian box pews, they're an absolute delight and to think that they still exist to this day inside this church. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to return back to the pews where I sat earlier and try and touch in again with spirit. I can say there's certainly a female presence here as well as a number of male presences. Quite who these people are, I couldn't obviously say. It's just a feeling and just touching into it. And as you touch into this energy, it's like slashing through layers of time, through centuries. And one wonders whether or not their day-to-day -day lives on another plane are being replayed out inside this church. But there's certainly a very strong and positive energy here. And to reiterate, it is an absolute delight. And if anybody could travel up here to this church, it would be a worthwhile journey. But anyway, let's go back to the pews and let's try and open up a bit more and try and draw through some more energy. Thank you for letting me wander around inside your beautiful church, a wonderful medieval vestige, which I've greatly enjoyed. But, of course, I wonder while I'm here whether anybody in spirit inside this church wishes to make friendly and positive contact with me. Strangely, it's bitterly cold outside and it's even colder inside this church. And yet being sat here, I don't feel that cold. A kind of warmth that binds everything together in here. A very strong spiritual warmth. Could you give an indication, please, of your presence here? Could you say something? As far as my physical condition is concerned, as at the present time, it's uh, still slightly tender at the side of the kidney. It certainly happened that way for Diane, and I'm hopeful it would happen that way for me. But as you and I know, when you tread into the uncharted depths of the paranormal, anything is feasible, anything is possible, or nothing at all. There are no written rules, there are no unwritten rules. 
It's every experience that you have connecting to this energy is always different. Yes. Just the wonderful ambience. Strangely, as I sit here with my eyes closed and as I open up to the energy that pervades this building, I can see or I can feel a very gentle, very feminine presence. I, I wonder, you know, I wonder if the white lady originally was a nun. The very first hospitals were staffed by nurses who were nuns. And indeed, the headdress that used to be worn across the world by nurses was a derivative of the nun's headdress. Of course, when we go back to the medieval period, um, when we look at hospitals, and nothing like they are today. Uh, largely, they were places where people went to die and the nuns administered to them spiritually. Whereas today, of course, in hospitals, it's more concerned less with the spiritual and more with the physical. So one can imagine that many people that went through these places would have died. But what if the white lady was a nun, a sister? And what if she had the touch to cure people in life and also in spirit? Okay, what I'm going to do is allow this camera to run on its own, independently of me. I'm going to go outside briefly and determine what we may pick up on camera later. But I'm hopeful that we might pick up something while I'm outside. Okay, I've popped out briefly. It's actually raining, although it's brilliantly sunny. I'm hoping that I have something to share. I 
can certainly feel an ambience. And what was particularly fascinating for me was when I went outside, there before me was a magnificent rainbow over the village. I mean, how lucky can that be? If you listen quietly, you can hear the rain on the roof. Wow, something very special, this church. And sadly for me, this is the end of my journey here today. It's time to return home. I can say I've touched into spirit. I've certainly felt it here. I certainly saw a shadow form move across the organ. And I'm certain that if anyone should call into this church with some ailment perhaps, or feeling a little bit down, this church would revive the spirits and put you back onto an even path. Certainly for me, I'm actually feeling a lot better, although whether or not this is just a temporary feeling that I'm experiencing now, I don't know. I'll certainly find out when I return home. But I thoroughly enjoy being here, and I hope you have too. And now I've got to face a long drive back to Essex, which is around about two and a half hours drive. Anyway, thank you for joining me, and I will see you again on my next daytime visit. Where that will be, I've yet to decide. But I thank you for being here with me today.